Hello and welcome back. Today I'm going to show you a quite interesting thing that you can do with any 10 scale shocks really to change the compression and rebound um, individually on their own. This is something which obviously the shocks are very very simple in RC. They're not designed with changing the compression and rebound individually in mind. It's something that you see in any real full-size motorsport, things like that. You've got the, the clicking adjustable valves on your shocks that you can change and I think it's very cool to be able to do it in RC as well and there is a quite easy way to do it so I'm going to show you that today. We started doing this back when the B6.4 came out and the shocks went from 12 to 13 mil shocks. We started fiddling around with ways to, you know, we were fiddling with shocks more and more. We found this quite interesting way to change the compression and rebound. So there's a few pistons that you can buy um, sort of off the internet that do this for you and from shops but this is a way of doing it that you don't really have to buy any pistons you can use the pistons that are in your kit and yeah it's just quite a cool way of doing it so let's get into it so basically we cut these little discs out of a sheet of laminating paper I don't know if you can see that but it's very thin probably 0.1 or 2 thick something um, disc cut out of laminator sheet and what you can do is basically drill a very small hole extra in your piston. So if you're running a two-hole piston, you can just drill an extra hole off to the side like that. Um, and yeah, the simple idea is that you're going to cover that little hole with the flap. And what that does is that when your piston is moving upwards, the flap is going to be shut. Because if you've got your flap on the top... You move the piston upwards, that shuts the flap, the hole's covered off, it doesn't do anything. As you move the shock shaft down, you've got the oil going through the hole, the flap just easily opens, and the shock can move down with effectively the three holes all being used. So, in that way you can get more rebound um, than compression. The other thing that you can do is actually put the piston on the bottom. And this is another especially interesting thing you can do, and what that does is actually allow you to increase the compression damping rather than increase the rebound or, or make the shock move more easily in compression so that you can have the shocks move easily, more easily in than they move out. And that's very good for sort of higher grip surfaces where you want to keep your car flatter, less bumpy. You want to keep your car flatter and more sucked to the track. I'll talk about more of the effects of what it does uh, in a bit. Now, the other thing that you can do, which I know that some people who have got these, we do sell these on our website, by the way. Obviously, you can cut them out yourself, but if you do want them just in a disc that we've cut out uh, with Tommy's Cutter Plotter, uh, and we've got these little shims that come with them as well that make sure they hold down more flat. What some people do do is rather than just do one little small hole like that in the piston, I've seen some people do effectively two pistons in one so say you're running two hole 1.7 what you can do is have two holes that are 1.7 opposite each other and have two holes that are 1.8 opposite each other and you can set the flap up in such a way you can have a flap on the top and the bottom set up in such a way that on the way up your shock is a 2 by 1.7 piston and on the way down your shock is a 2 by 1.8 piston and that's quite a cool thing that you can do. So you've got a flap on the bottom that opens on the way up and a flap on the top that opens on the way down. The holes opposite each other. And you can effectively have two pistons in one as well using this method, which I think is quite cool. So I'll just show you how to do it. Obviously get your shock shaft, put the standard shim on that comes with it, put your piston on. And I recommend starting with a 1.2 mil hole if you're going to just do the small additional hole method which is what we usually do. 1.2, I remember working out, is approximately the difference in rebound between a 12mm and 13mm shock. That's another interesting thing, that the shocks naturally have easier rebound than compression, less rebound damping than compression, because underneath your piston, you've got less oil than above, because your shaft is taking up some space. So for every 5mm downwards that you move your piston, not as much oil has to go through the piston as on the way up. And when you go from a 12mm shock to a 13mm shock and the shaft stays the same, 
that means that you get a more equal damping between rebound and compression because the oil below and above the piston is more similar. So it actually changed the rebound and that's why we started messing with it. So I think I think it increases it. I can't remember what the number was, but it's just a small amount, but it's no, noticeable on track and it seems about right. So a 1.2 hole, obviously you can try more or less, but start with 1.2 and yeah, basically you just get your screw Put the little shim on you can do it without a little shim but we found that sometimes the flap wants to spin around and obviously once you've cut it out and it spins around that is something that is definitely not going to be useful but chuck the flap on the screw like that and then screw the entire flap for now to the shock to the top of the shock shaft and the piston do it up and then as you can see, you've got the disc on top of the piston there. And then all that you do is literally cut off the bit that you don't want. So you want to leave some flap covering the hole. So you just slice it off like that. Boom. And boom. There we go. And you can cut the back part off as well, but you don't really need to. It's not affecting anything. So I don't know if you can see that on the camera, but now... We've just got the very small um, flap left there and the only hole that it's covering is the small extra hole that we've drilled. And that allows when the shock's moving down that that hole is going to be, um, yeah, that hole's going to be working, oil flowing through it and on the way up, the oil won't be able to flow through it on the way down. So yeah, that's the quite easy way that you can play with the rebound and compression damping in your shock. And why would you want to do that? Now, basically, it just it affects how the car sort of goes through bumps, um, how the car rolls as it moves, things like that. So when you've got when the car has less rebound damping, so effectively it can move upwards easier than it goes down. That means that when the car rolls, it kind of tries to lift up a little bit. Because if you think about it, it's easier for the inside shocks to move upwards than it is for the outside shocks to move downwards. So it kind of makes the, heart, the car drive a little bit higher. That's with the, the flap on the top. Makes the car drive a little bit higher up um, and allows the wheel to sort of go into the track more. It will follow the, the, the ground a little bit better and the car drives a bit higher. That's good for lower traction conditions that are bumpy. It allows your wheels to stay on the ground more since the wheels can come back down easier. And the car drives a little bit higher and generally feels like it generates a little bit more grip. When you get to high traction, smooth surfaces, that can be a bad thing. You can want the car to stay a little bit more sucked to the track. You don't want it to lift up at any time. You want it to feel like it's down in the track and super stable to drive. And in that scenario, that's when we've put the flap on the bottom of the piston before to actually reduce the compression damping, which means that the car can move down easier and harder to move up. Because that, again, you go into a corner, the back end's not going to lift as much. It'll more sink down at the front. You come out of the corner, the front's not going to lift as much. It'll more sink down at the back. And the car stays a lot more sucked to the track and flat. Something we've used occasionally on carpet, things like that. So, yeah, that's pretty much it for the video. I just thought it's quite an interesting thing that we've sometimes done before that you guys might be interested in. So, yeah, if you want to get the discs that we do, they're on our website. If not, you can just cut them out of a laminator sheet, something like that, something very thin. The flap, basically, if you look down the piston, you want it to be thin enough so that if you move it really, really slowly down, it still lifts up the same amount as when you move it quickly down. They're, they're that thin that it's like, it doesn't matter, the speed that you move the piston doesn't matter. It always just opens to the amount of flow that's going through the hole. So you're controlling the rebound purely basically by the size of the hole and that's i think the most consistent and nice way to do it so yeah interesting video hopefully you'll find it useful i'll see you in the next one